everyone, I'm Suzanne Lively. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to share with you what we use for our secular history curriculum. This video is part of a collaboration between other secular homeschoolers. I'm really excited to see what secular choices they make to teach their children history. So when you're finished this video, please be sure to check out the playlist down below and see what else everybody's using in their homes. And special thanks to our host, Valerie, from our homeschool castle. I love that name, our homeschool castle. So please be sure to check out her video. I'll link that down below as well as the playlist. Okay, first things first. What's up with the hat? <laughs> this is like the second video I've done with hats. Now, I absolutely love hats. And I do find they're very fanciful. And I always feel really happy wearing them. Sometimes I wear them around the house just for fun. But I'm wearing it today because I haven't dyed my hair and I have quite a few gray roots. So this was the easiest way to deal with it today. So you're getting the benefit of my beautiful orange hat, which I picked it up thrifting brand new a couple years ago. I was thrifting. The hat was still brand new with its tags. Okay. Um, all right. Without further ado, let's jump in. I'm going to do something a bit different with this video than from my normal videos. And um, I'll tell you why in a moment. Oh, and I'll tell you exactly what in a moment. But I just want to be clear. If you're somebody that likes open and go curriculum, then my this wouldn't be for you. <laughs> I personally love unit studies. I love the research. I love the preparation. I love learning things. Honestly, I would get bored if everything in my homeschool was open and go. I would. I think I would quickly grow to hate homeschooling, which is not really my goal. Um, we do not have an open go curriculum for history. What we have been doing for the past couple of years in particular, my daughter's now eight, has been a huge amount of unit studies. Now, I did say at the beginning of this school year, of the 2021 to 2022 school year, we will be doing Story of the World. Story of the World comes with some debate on if it's secular or not secular. Whether it is or not, or even if one part of it is, another part isn't, does not matter for this video because I only did two chapters out of the whole book this year. So what we've been doing for our unit studies has been, we've been following the heritage, like the government heritage history months. So for example, last year we did a huge study for Black History Month. We did a huge study for Women's History Month. And I will leave a link to those videos down below because there's a huge amount of resources in those videos. For example, last year for Women's History Month, I did a series. So there's like four different videos chock full of resources on specific topics that have to do with women's history. So have a look at that if it's of interest to you. Now this year I added in two more months to that. And it was we did Hispanic Heritage Month, which is September 15th to October 15th. And we added in the Native American Heritage Month. Um... And even at Christmas time, we did a bunch of Christmas studies. I have done one with Vivian. This was our second year. We did Christmas in New York. And I also included in that some Who HQ books, Roaring, The Roaring Twenties. And we did things on the Depression. So, and I did that because I knew we were also working up to doing the Harlem Renaissance, which uh, that kind of book ends that period. And we're doing that for Black History Month this year. And that video, I just released it last week. Have a look at that if you have an interest in doing some of the Black History Month um, studies. As in particular, this year, it's Harlem Renaissance. And then we'll move in again to Women's History Month this year. Huge amount of resources, which some of them I still have on my shelves and some we return to the library. So again, see those videos if you're interested. What I've decided to do with, what I've decided to do with this video is... I'm going to show you the resources that we're going to use. So it's almost like a planning video slash see inside video, what we're going to use for our Latin American study. So, um, so we have a huge amount of resources for world history. And if you saw a video earlier in the year on world studies, you would have saw a lot of those resources. What I'm going to do, though, is because we're going back to Latin American study, that's how we're going to finish out our history after we do the Women's History Month, which is in March. So for April, May, and June, we go to the end of June in our school year, we will be doing Latin America. 
So one of the spines we'll be using, it's not the only thing, but the one spine is a piece of curriculum. And this is Living Legends Latin American. Um, this is Living Legends Latin America. And this is by Ann uh, Garnera. Sorry. And this is by Ann Garnera. She's of the Language Learning at Home. And I'll link this down below. But I'm, I'm going to show you what we're going to do for one month. And I think I'll choose a place. Um, yes. So this might be a little lengthier video than I normally do. But if you have, but if you have an interest in seeing one, all the resources we use and seeing inside some of the ones that I've shown you in the past year, say it again. This might be a little bit lengthier video than I normally put out. However, if you are interested in seeing how we can do a study on a particular uh, country, then stick around. And also, if you wanted to see inside some of the resources that I've been showing and talking about since the beginning of this school year, definitely check it out because some of them are amazing. All right, without further ado, I am going to do a flip inside. I'm gonna do a look inside. Anyway, I'm really excited and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm really excited to share these resources with you and to have the opportunity in this video to do so. Some of them I've said I was going to share with you since the beginning of the school year. So it's great to have the chance to do so now. This will be one of the resources that I use for a spine. Uh, I will supplement with other materials. As you see here, this focuses obviously on Latin America, which means it leaves off, for example, Brazil from South America. And the reason is Brazil is a Portuguese speaking country. Now, I still want to include that in our study because it is part of South America. The other thing I want to mention about this resource is it focuses on living books, myths, and stories to draw children into the rich history and cultures of Latin America, meaning it's not really strict in terms of chronology. It's not the focus. And it isn't the focus is not to give you a timeline approach to Latin American history but it can support that, which is how I'm going to use it. Now I'm going to share with you some of the resources you see in front of you for Latin, this Latin America study. It isn't obviously all of them. I didn't want to share a whole list, but these were some that I really loved. First we'll go Tales Our Abuelitas Told Us, a Hispanic folktale collection. I'm just going to show you this book. It's so lovely. Illustrations. One of the things I love about the books I'm about to share with you is that they are bilingual, so they have English and Spanish. This is the first tortilla. The illustrations again, oh, they're so lovely. Then we have the lizard and the sun. I'm so happy to have this on our shelf. Then we have the bossy galito. Look at that. So again, yes, English and Spanish, which is fantastic if you're teaching Spanish. P.O.P. Traditional Spanish Nursery Rhymes. We had this at the library a couple times. My daughter was so happy when we actually ended up with our own copy. And then we have Diaz de Ditos. I hope I said that okay. Ten Little Fingers. Other play rhymes and action songs from Latin America. And I love this. There's some in here my daughter could play for sure on her piano. The next set of books I'm going to share with you are very much focused on the history component. And this is going to be our Maya, Aztec, and Inca civilization study. Now, I picked these up off of Core Knowledge, Core Curriculum. They are free. I'll leave a link below. This one here, the Early Civilizations of the Americas. I do believe it is from their History and Geography section. Now, I do believe it is for first grade, which I'm totally fine with because it serves a purpose. And my purpose is I wanted to introduce these three topics to my daughter in a very easy and accessible way. So here we have the Marvelous Maya, the Amazing Aztec, the Incredible Inca, a story from the Americas, the Maya, Aztec, and Inca today. This is why I like it. Very colorful, really quick, easy read. Obviously, it's for first graders but gives you the information you need. And then it has some timeline cards, which I didn't make up cards, but I did print them off. I think they're fantastic. 
Now, the books that you see here, I specifically bought to go with Story of the World. And there were lists at the beginning of the book of the books they wanted you to have. They were going to refer to. And I admit, I hunted down even the old ones because I didn't want to be hassled trying to figure out what pages go with the new book, that sort of thing. So some of these are a little bit old. <laughs> For example, this is what it looks like. So out of that book, it'll be the Aztec. Um, then we have the Kingfisher History Encyclopedia. And there's quite a few different pages in here. I've gone through and marked what we'll be referencing. Okay, and then we're into the Americas. Here we are. So the Aztecs and the Incas. Yep. And there's more throughout. Now, this is the Usborne Encyclopedia World History book. And I like this one. It has the internet links and I already went on. And they had a little bit of information that we could use for the study for sure. I love these because they're really colorful. Great for children. Well, to be honest, they're great for me too. And lastly, we have the Kingfisher Illustrated History of the World. I flag this again. So in here we have the Aztecs and Incas. So this information might get repetitive. Next set of books. You definitely saw those if you watch my hauls because I was super excited when I got my hands on these books. And I also showcase them in my homeschool tour. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. I have a shelf just for these particular books. All right, we're going to start with the uh, History Atlas. And I, again, I have flagged what's pertinent to this topic. We'll give you a quick look, though. Love it. Oh, here we are. So, the Inca world. Can you see this? Nope, I don't think you can. So I'm going to go like this. Here's the top. Gorgeous. Oh, started there. Continues on. Yeah. Next, the Myth Atlas. Maps, monsters, heroes, and gods from 12 mythological worlds. at this book gorgeous okay now for our study Aztec myths the Aztec world We have the food atlas. Again, I'll do a quick. Oh, there's the one we want anyway. There's South America, Peru, Ecuador. You see that? Okay. Brazil, Argentina, Chile. This is a little one I picked up from Book Outlet. It's really cute. It's fun to have different resources to keep myself and the little one entertained. Next batch. This first one is Osborne stories from around the world. And there's two stories in here that are pertinent. The first one is How Birds Got Bright Feathers, a story from South America. Love these, they're beautiful and colorful. Oh, and this is a singing toad, a story from Mexico. Now we've done, we did it so much on Mexico at the beginning of the year. However, we missed that book, so I'll make sure we read it. Just go around. At the beginning of the year, when we did Hispanic Heritage Month, we were a little all over the place, depending on the resources available to us online. However, we did focus 
hugely on Mexico and other parts of Central America. So we'll touch on a little bit of that, but our focus is probably going to be more on South America. These are mapping the continents. I, I love these. I haven't had a chance to use them. We got them from our Scholastic Hall and I'm excited we get to use them now. This is the mapping uh, North America. We won't use a lot out of this particular one. Just so you have a look. There's some things in there, but we'll primarily focus on this one, mapping the continents of South America. And there's a, yeah, so we'll definitely be using this a lot. Okay. This is Usborne's Book of Peoples of the World. And this is internet linked as well, which is fantastic. So we have Mexico. And we have Central America. The Caribbean. South America. In the mountains. Rainforest peoples. Combined cultures. Brazil. Now we did this at the beginning of the school year, but there's there were so many at once that I knew I would refer to it again as we went through different countries. So this is Venezuela. And this is Honduras. This is a DK book, A Child Through Time, uh, the book of children's history. And again, I have this one flagged. And this is for a Maya girl. Just uh, in case you wanted a glimpse of this, if you're thinking of purchasing it. For the next set of books, I'm going to focus on Peru. We will be using these books for multiple regions. However, the easiest way to show you these books is to focus on one place. So I chose Peru. Now this top one is Festivals of the World Peru. We got it from our library. It was in the free table. Make a sun mask. Now this is one of the Who HQ books. Where is Machu Picchu? Now you know I love these books. I'm not sure if we're going to read this. I will approach it with my daughter and see what she says because we, we did watch a lot of videos about Machu Picchu in that area in the fall so we'll see. I'm not going to force it if she is resistant and feels she knows it all. Now we have this flag of the world book and I'll give you a glimpse. It has a lot of quite a bit of information for each place surprisingly. So and for this video here's Peru. So it gives you information about Peru and the flag, the continent, capital, currency, official language, area, highest point. I'll show you the two Lonely Planet books next. This one is Lonely Planet Kids, Amazing World Atlas, Bringing the World to Life. Oops. Okay. Now, South America. Oh. So here it is, Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. So this is perfect. Mexico, South America. I love how they do, they're do. they doing this. They have Northern South America, Southern South America, so helpful. Next we'll look at Lonely Planet Kids, the travel book. to go okay there's a bunch in here that is relevant to us yeah okay so mexico belize guatemala el salvador honduras nicaragua costa rica panama bahamas cuba jamaica haiti dominican republic and i love that they all have the same layout so you can find what you're looking for really quickly. 
I absolutely love this book, The Atlas Obscura Explorer's Guide for the World's Most Adventurous Kid. And if you're doing South America, it surprisingly has many. Usually you can only get a couple, but see all those yellow flags? Oops. Those are all for our study. It's, here's your packing list. The, the book is just so cool in its approach. Adventure plan. So you can go exactly where you want. I'm going to do the flip through. Look. I'll show you some of the ones pertinent to us. Um, Peru. Oop. Colombia, oops, Honduras, Venezuela, I love saying Venezuela, Bolivia, oh, it's going to be so hard to edit, okay, Argentina, and Chile, yeah, isn't that amazing, ugh, had no idea this book would be so perfect for us. Then we have a world of birds with 75 birds from across the globe. I love the approach of this. Mm. All right, so I'll show you South America. It's a bunch of birds for South America. Again, I'll show you inside. Okay. This is one of the in focus books and it's on cities. Love these. Again, if you watch my hauls, you definitely saw me go on about this one. So this is actually why I grabbed this. Rio de Janeiro. Oh it opens both ways. I hope you can see that. I'm filming these a tad bit awkward. Okay, so. And they all open in the same format. Really, the illustrations are beautiful. Okay, the next book is Wild City Meet the Animals Who Share Our City Spaces. Another beautiful one. So, again, Rio de Janeiro. Oh. The last book in this pile, The Cultured Chef, an international guide for kids who love to cook, and this is a workbook edition. Mm -hmm. I would really love to have the original cookbook with this. This is Brazil. Brazilian cheese bread. Brazil, Brazil. And then we get into Colombia. Oops. Another resource we'll be using is these Kiwi crates. We have a subscription for the Atlas crates and I saved these specifically for this study. So this one is a Brazil and that one is Guatemala. We also get subscription letters from Letters from Afar, and I've saved Chile and Cuba. It's A Secret of the Andes by Anne Nolan Clark. This is about a little boy in modern times that goes up into the Andes and looks for his heritage, and he has Inca heritage. And we also have this book in the Brave Writer, Dart, so we'll be doing this as part of our language arts as well. The last book I'm going to mention is A World Full of Poems, Inspiring Poetry for Children. We do a lot of poetry in our house. Now, I bought this to go with the World Studies. However, I'm a little disappointed. I mean, your children, it's gorgeous. I love the paper. And I'm sure our kids can get an idea just to hear different voices. I'm sure the poems give us that, which is worthy. However, what I was hoping for was a poem that was attached to a particular place so I could look up 
Brazil, for example, and find a poem written by somebody in Brazil. So if you know of a book like that, please leave it in the comments below. So it's definitely a resource that we'll use, however, not in the way that I had intended. So we haven't actually looked at it this year because of that. Okay, this set is all these little World Atlas books that we have purchased from Amazon. I'll give you a quick look at those. The first one is this Atlas of the World sticker book. It has 150 stickers. I just thought this was fun to add in. Cat is seriously purring at the door. That's cute. Okay. National Geographic Kids World Atlas sticker activity book. I mean, how many do you need? I don't know. Apparently a couple. National Geographic Kids Ultimate Globe Trotting World Atlas. And that has maps, games, activities, and more for hours of adventure. Oh, it's all like this. Okay. Is that in frame? Around the World Coloring Book. Oh, and had Brazil. I guess that's why I had a flag. Argentina, Mexico. 